Well, thank you guys so much. Good evening. Um, yeah, first, you know, as, as we get started, I just want to thank, uh, thank you guys so much for having me. And, uh, you know, just to share a little bit about myself, Bill just shared um, Living Stones Church is uh, literally family for me. Yeah, I'm married into the Barley family. My wife is Bill's uh, daughter. Um, and it's just, it's been such a blessing for us. Um, we've lived in Oahu for about six years now, or five, five to six years. And, uh, you know, this year's just been nuts. It's been crazy. Uh, our, our church on Oahu, we haven't met for uh, since March, you know, and I think even coming back, there's been just this kind of re-entry, like smack in the face of like, how do we worship again? And how do we <laughs> engage at church with people? We just haven't met since March. And, um, and for us, uh, it's just a blessing to be here. It's a blessing to meet. It's a blessing to, uh, to be with the body and not just be in, in our living rooms looking at the screen. It's so nice to cook breakfast Sunday morning and just hang out on our, our couch. But uh, this is just way better. And, and, and so we're just so grateful to, uh, to be able to be here in person uh, with the body. And um, I'm, a, I'm a teacher over uh, on Oahu. I've been teaching. This is my third year. I teach high school. And uh, I do this every day. I, every day I... I uh, I, I teach lessons to, to, to students, and um, I was thinking about this the other day. I was thinking, you know, um, the opportunity to, to teach, uh, to preach is just, is just such an honor, and, and uh, I just wanted to kind of share that with you guys when I was uh, getting ready. You know, this is very similar to what I do every single day, and yet... Uh, there's just nothing greater to talk about. There's nothing greater to contemplate, to think about, uh, to share about, yeah, to build a foundation for than Jesus, than to talk about him. Um, and at, just as I was um, getting ready the last few weeks, um, uh, I just want to thank you guys to, uh, for letting me be here and to share because uh, it's an honor to talk about Jesus. It's an honor to teach about the, the most consequential thing that we can talk about, the most consequential thing that we can think about. Um, and so thank you guys for, for letting me do this. And then, Bill, I, I feel like uh, this may be my only chance to ever do this. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes tonight. Um, but so I feel like I want to, Sorry to do this to you, Bill, but I want to steal, or I want to, like, uh, you're going to lose some treasure tonight because I just wanted to honor you, and um, I, I had the opportunity to live with Bill um, when, I, when we first got married. Um, a year after we got married to save money, we moved into to Bill's home, and, and I was just thinking about this. If there was anything that I wanted to do tonight was I wanted to just share two things that I love about Bill and two things that I think uh, he'll, he should never say this about himself because it, it would just be really bad. It'd be very bad for him to brag, but um, Bill is one of the most faithful men that I know, and, and living with him, seeing him uh, at home, um, he is just an amazing leader, amazing father, and, and he is, it's just an honor to be part of his family. Um, and I want to just say that uh, to, you know, Living Stones as, as his church, um, that he is someone who is so faithful and trustworthy. Um, and I've seen him not just on Sunday. I've seen him at home. I've seen him in his ugly clothes <laughs> and <laughs> watching TV, watching all our shows and and. Um, Bill, um, yeah, he's just such a faithful, you're such a faithful man, faithful man of God. And, um, I've seen him on the, the Lanai seeking the Lord every day and, and, and he's, and he's just been faithful and he, he continues to be faithful. So I just wanted to, uh, to honor him tonight. And, um, you know, it's, it's a relief. I think for me, it's a relief when, when I know that my leaders, um, are the same person when no one's watching, you know, and, and I can just say that Bill is completely that. He, he's the same man when no one's looking, no one's watching, you know, and, and so, yeah, Bill, thank you. We can give him applause. We can, thank you, Bill. He's losing treasure in heaven. 
All right, so um, tonight, uh, I just wanted to, um, I've been thinking about New Year's, and I, I, I think this has just been, I think everybody's been, been getting excited. I, uh, um, we, the sermon this morning, Tim, Bill's brother, preached an awesome sermon this morning, um, and he just shared, you know, I think anybody preparing a, a sermon for tonight or today is considering next year, is considering how are, uh, everybody's just ready for 2020 to end, 2021 to begin. Um, and, you know, he shared uh, this morning that, you know, this year, wherever he's gone, he's gone all over the, the world. And it's the witness is the same that this year was just rough. It was the worst. And we just can't wait to move on. Um, and I, I love New Year's. I think New Year's is... Um, you know, it's our new start. It's our new uh, opportunity to see change in our life. Um, and I think we've all been getting re- ready for this. Um, and uh, as Tim shared this morning, he said this. I, I thought this was awesome. Um, he had us all uh, hold our pulse. And he just said this. He said, if you have a pulse, there's hope. Yeah, if you, if you have uh, blood flowing through your veins, there's hope. And I think that's what New Year's uh, kind of does for me is it, it, it gives me uh, uh, just fresh hope for for what's coming, yeah. Fresh hope for a new start, a new year, um, and uh, uh, a, a chance to to say um, goodbye to 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 what's been or what what we've just lived through, and and look at what's next. And so um, tonight, that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about that hope. I think that that's what God has for us tonight. Uh, I personally think that's what He has for me, and so I might just be talking to myself tonight. Um, but hopefully uh, the Lord just speaks to all of us. He puts new hope in our hearts. And so um, if you guys don't mind, uh, I'd like to pray just to start and um, just to help me. It helps me out. <laughs> yeah, Jesus, we just thank you. We thank you that, um, yeah, that that your desires that we would have hope, God, that, that our faith is not built on something uh, something temporal. Our faith is not built on something we don't know and we don't understand, God. Our faith is built on a hope that you've placed in us, a hope that you've displayed to us, God. And and so we just invite you tonight, come and speak to us, come and uh, uh, put that hope in our heart, Jesus. And I just pray that that hope would become faith, that hope uh, would be expressed through through faith, God faith for this new year, faith for what, what you have, God. And so, yeah, we just thank you for the hope of Jesus. We thank you for this season of hope. Uh, and uh, yeah, just Holy Spirit, move on our hearts. Do what uh, you love to do. And, and we just, we're expecting you to meet us tonight. We're expecting you to, to change us, God, and, uh, and, and give us a hope for what, what's coming. We just pray this in your name. Amen. Okay, so New Year's. Uh, how many of you guys do New Year's resolutions? Are you guys all about that? Not really? No? No? You guys? <laughs> nobody. <laughs> nobody. Okay, then we, I guess I'm done for tonight. <laughs> no, no. Um, tonight I wanted to talk about New Year's resolutions. And um, I do New Year's resolutions every year. Um, and I get excited about New Year's resolutions um, I'm, I'm an athlete. I played sports all uh, my life, my whole life I played sports. And um, I'm kind of competitive and I'm kind of, um, I, I like real inspirational quotes from coaches that tell you, you got to prepare and you got to do this if you want to succeed. I love all that kind of stuff. I eat all that up. And New Year's is kind of that time where I'm like, uh, I sit down and I think, how am I going to change myself? I write down all these different things. Um, and uh, uh, there's, a, there's a verse from Proverbs 29, 18, and I feel like every year I read this, and I, uh, this is kind of my motivation for, for New Year's resolutions. So if you don't do New Year's resolutions, um, uh, I hope that tonight that uh, you would consider maybe doing it for next year, and we'll talk more about that. Um, but Proverbs 21, uh, 29, 18 it says, where, where there is no vision, the people perish. And 
Um, and I actually, I, I share this with my kids all the time, my high school students, because especially this year, they're, um, we're, we're teaching online, and, and I know they're just playing video games. They're not really listening to me. They're not uh, engaged. And, and I'm just, like, uh, trying to find ways to encourage them, ways to motivate them. And so my high school students, I usually do this. Um, I share this verse with them. I don't tell them where it comes from. But then I say, um, this is a, a, a really uh, important statement that I live by. And I tell them, where there is no vision, uh, people perish. Or where there is no vision, um, there's just no life for you. You're not going to do what needs to be done uh, to make your life successful. If you don't have a vision, you're not going to do the hard things. You're not going to study for uh, the things that, that we give you in school. You're not going to look for the next thing and be willing to work hard. Um, and eventually, it's not going to be life for you if you don't have a vision for your life. And, and so I always, I read this, and I always, um, I feel like this motivates me. I think, yeah, God. Uh, if I don't have a vision for this year, then it's just going to be a wash. Yeah, I'm not going to um, accomplish anything. I'm not going to do anything, God. Um, and so this is kind of my motivational um, verse. Where there's no vision, people perish. Um, but this year was just really different. I've been thinking about this a lot. And thinking about resolutions, thinking about, you know, Trying to imagine that 2021 is just, as soon as January 1st hits, everything's going to shift and everything's going to change. And the reality is, you know, as I'm thinking about that, it's just not true, right? We know that uh, uh, 2021, right January 1st, a couple days from now, things aren't going to immediately change. And where, where I found myself thinking about my resolutions was I was disillusioned. I just kind of felt like, what's the point? Because I'm so limited by, by what next year is going to be like. There's no point in really making all these, uh, these goals and resolutions because I'm, I'm so limited. And, um, and, and I just as I was thinking through all these different things that I could start putting my, um, my mind towards, my heart towards, I was just kind of like, no, it's not going to happen. And um, it just kind of left me a little bit disillusioned. Um, you know, it's, it, and, and, and for me, it's the same thing every year. I, I'll tell you this. This is my first thing on my list. I'm going to lose 15 pounds. It's like always my number one resolution. And every year, I do not, gain, I do not lose 15 pounds. I gain weight every year, unfortunately. Yeah. And so, um, you know, New Year's resolutions can, can leave us sometimes disillusioned. Um, and on the other side of the coin, sometimes they can, they can make us, uh, it can deceive us to think uh, that if I just work harder, if I just uh, uh, tighten up my bootstraps, if I just put in more effort, then I'm going to make my life better. I'm going to make, I'm going to actually uh, make everything go better, you know. And, and so today, uh, you know, I was, I was getting ready this last couple, uh, couple weeks and, and I was just thinking, God, what is the point about talking about New Year's resolutions? I feel like everybody's going to be disillusioned like me. And they're going to be, or they're going to be deceived to think that, you know what? To solve our problems, we just need to start working harder. We need, and I just feel like, well, that's not really a good message right now. Um, I don't think, I think that's a deception that we're going to be able to do this. And so um, sitting down again this year, I was praying. And I took out my Bible and I brought up Proverbs uh, 29, 18, and this time there's a different version that I was reading, and it said, where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. And, and when I was reading that, I felt like I saw it new for, for the first time, um, and I felt like I heard the Lord say this. He said, Sean, this year you don't need more resolve. He said, you need more revelation. You don't need more resolutions. You don't need better resolutions. And you don't need to, to come up with or read better things to give you better ideas about what you need to be doing. He said, you need to hear from me. You need revelation from me. Um, and uh, tonight, I, I just have just a, a real simple word. I felt like the Lord said he gave me these three areas that he wanted to bring revelation to me. Um, to avoid disillusionment and to avoid deception. As I create these resolutions, as I create these uh, visions for the year, I felt like he said, Sean, there's these three revelations that I have for you. And so um, number one, 
uh, I felt like he said, uh, I'm going to replace resolutions or, or he wants to replace resolutions that measure me in my sight with revelation that measures me in his sight. Okay. And uh, when we when we create these resolutions, I think um, the first step is really we measure ourselves. The first step, that's the first thing I do. I step on the scale and I realize, oh my gosh, I got to lose a lot of weight this year, not just 15 pounds. We measure ourselves, right, is the first thing we do. Um, and I felt like uh, when we come up with resolutions, we're confronted with our weakness. Yeah, we're confronted with areas that we're weak. Um, and, and, and when we form those out of the way that we measure ourselves, you know, when I'm just looking at what I think is important, what I think uh, measures my worth, what measures my value for the year, um, I, I think it, it, it just kind of, that's what leaves me disillusioned. I felt like the Lord said, um, success is different in my sight. And this year, I want to replace your measurements with my measurements. I want to replace how you measure yourself with the way that I measure you. Um, and and uh, there's two ways that I want to talk about. Um, the first, I feel like uh, God wants us to, uh, to have more revelation on, is that I am measured in Christ. Okay? I am measured in Christ, first and foremost. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 27-31 it says, God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God that is our righteousness, our holiness, our redemption. And therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. And I just feel like as we start or as we look at how, how do we measure ourselves this year, it, it's just so important that we're reminded um, that God measures us in Jesus. He measures us in his son. Um, and it's his son that is our wisdom, it's our, his son that is our righteousness, our holiness, and our redemption. Um, and that, that is our starting point, you know, that, that we're just reminded that this is uh, who God sees us through and who God sees us as is what, what the son has done, yeah? And lest we think our, our uh, resolutions are going to make us amazing, um, it's really God that, that the, that God, or Jesus that God sees us through, yeah? okay? Um, and then the second thing with measurement, I felt like the Lord was saying um, that uh, he wants me to see that I am measured by, by my love. I'm not measured um, by, you know, this has been a year of, of, of losing a lot of things. We've lost jobs. We've lost freedom, uh, a lot of different freedoms. Uh, we've lost a lot of leisures that we love. We've lost, even lost a lot of really uh, important things that, that uh, define who we are. Um, and, and I just felt like the Lord was saying, uh, just remember, Sean, that you're measured mostly by, by, my, by your love. Um, and uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 2, he says, uh, if I speak in the tongues of men and angels but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have a prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. And um, you know, just as we, we look at how, how are we going to be measured this year, what is uh, the measurement we want to we wanna use uh, I feel like the Lord wants to remind us that it's our love that he's after. And, um, and uh, you know, for me, it's just, you know, um, before I, I think about what God wants me to do for him, um, that he's after my heart. He's after my, the quality of my love towards him. Yeah? So uh, that's number one. Uh, number two thing, uh, I, I felt like the Lord was speaking. He said, I want to uh, replace, we are to replace resolutions that are formed by my circumstances 
with revelation of his will and purposes for my life. Okay? Um, just thinking about uh, forming, forming my resolutions, uh, just kind of feeling this, this uh, intense desire to, uh, to get out of the circumstances that we're in right now. And uh, in a lot of ways, like I said earlier, just feeling limited by my circumstances with, with work and with leisure and uh, with our church, like I said, not being able to meet. Um, you know, we've been racking our brains. How are we supposed to do ministry um, and we've just kind of felt this overall sense of like, well, uh, there's no there's no church to invite people to, and um, our housing is uh, our house gatherings are limited, and just feeling the weight of our circumstances, and just kind of feeling like God, we need to escape these things. We need to move on to the next thing. Um, and I and I just felt like uh, the Lord was saying, wait, Sean, wait, um, that. Uh, if we're too hasty to move on, if we're too hasty to, to, to move to the next thing, we're going to miss the Lord altogether. Um, and, uh, you know, for me has been this thing, I just can't wait for uh, everything to open up. I can't wait for everything to get back to normal. And I, and I just uh, feel like the Lord was saying, pause. Um, I want to give you a revelation of my will for during coronavirus. I want to show you my will when everything's shut down. I want to show you my will uh, when you have to teach online and it's really hard for you. Um, and I want to show you my purposes in these things uh, and, and just feeling that God doesn't want us to miss it. He doesn't want us to miss the, the unique opportunity that we have right now. And um, I want to just share real quickly from Job. Job is one of my favorite books in the Bible and I don't understand half of Job. I don't, I don't really get it. It's like, it's so confusing. Um, it's so complex, okay? But, um, but Job is my favorite. I love the book of Job. And uh, I, I just kind of share a little bit um, uh, about, you know, I, I hope it connects to what I'm trying to talk about. I don't know if it's going to connect to what I'm talking about. Um, but with God showing us uh, his will in our, in our circumstances, in our trials, you know, the book of Job, most of us know it's uh, Job is this righteous man that endures suffering. And the whole, you know, basically the whole book is about uh, Job loses everything. And then he, he has these friends. He has three friends that he kind of goes back and forth with about why is this happening to him? Why are righteous people suffering? Why are good people facing the loss of everything? Yeah. Um, and the confusing thing to me always is I always listen to Job. And I'm like, it doesn't seem like Job has a good attitude here. And then I'm always like, I'm like listening to his friends talk to him, and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I probably would say the same thing to my friends, <laughs> what, what his friends are saying to Job. Um, and it's just really, it can be very confusing. Um, but why Job is my favorite, one of my favorite books, um, is that there's this part in, in Job that I feel like um, it. God was revealing Jesus in this, in the, in, in, there's certain points or there's certain parts in the Old Testament. I don't know if you've gone on the journey, but there's so, I mean, Jesus is everywhere in the Old Testament. And, um, and I feel like there was a season of my life, I was reading through Job, um, and, and I stumbled across this passage, and I feel like the Lord was saying, Sean, it's my will. Every day, every hour, every scripture that you read, I want to reveal Jesus. I want to reveal my son. And, and I feel like this is one of the most profound ones to me. And I think uh, to go with what I'm talking about tonight is that if we're so quick to, to leave our circumstances or try to get out of our circumstances, we might miss the greatest revelation of Jesus that we've ever had. We may miss the, the most powerful revelation of the Son that he wants to give to us during this season. And um, I'll just read from Job 
God's will is to reveal his son in our circumstances. Um, this verse that I have, Job 9, 1 through 7 and 10, uh, is Job, he loses everything. And this is one of his statements. He starts kind of complaining. Job, Job has these complaints to the Lord because he knows that he was righteous. He knows that he followed the, the letter of the law. He did the things that he knew pleased the Lord. Um, and still he lost everything. And then he, he, he goes into this rant. It says, Job answered and he said, truly I know that it is so, but how can man be right before God? If one wished to contend with him, one could not answer him once in a thousand times. He is wise in heart, mighty in strength, who has hardened himself against him and succeeded. He mo removes mountains and they know it not. He overturns them in his anger who shakes the earth out of its place and its pillars tremble. Who commands the sun and it does not rise? Who seals up the stars? Who does great things beyond searching out and marvelous things beyond number? He's saying, who can stand before this God that is just beyond comprehension, right? Right? Who can stand before this God that, that is, uh, does so mar much marvelous things that we don't understand? And then I love this. Later on in this chapter, Job 9, 32 to 33, he says, For he is not a man as I am, that I might answer him, that we should come to trial together. There is no arbiter between us. There's no mediator between us who may lay his hand on us both. And, and I remember the first time I read this, and I was just in awe. I was saying, uh, I remember just thinking, oh my gosh, Job is crying out for Jesus. In the midst of this, this circumstance, he's crying out for a man who wouldn't be born for thousands of years. He's saying there's just nobody that would stand in the gap. And I was talking to my wife today, and I was just saying, how amazing, you know, we're, we're in Christmas season. How amazing. You can imagine Job in heaven. And when he sees Christ born on the planet, you can just imagine him being like, oh, my gosh. There's the arbiter, the mediator. There's the one that I've been, that I was complaining about. I feel like God put this on Job's heart. And in the midst of his darkest circumstance, he was revealing Jesus. He was revealing the Son. He was saying, yes, Job, there is a mediator. There is one that's coming that can stand on behalf of you, and that's going to stand on behalf of God. And there's, there's a man coming. His name is Jesus. And I can just see as Job is complaining that God is saying, yes, that is it. You are crying out for the, the one the one that's to come, yeah? And, and I just feel that in our circumstances, God wants to reveal his son as he's never revealed his son before. He wants to exalt his son as our greatest need, the greatest, deepest thing that we need in our life, yeah? Um, and so we don't want to move too quickly out of our, or we don't want to form our resolutions based on circumstances saying, God, we need to do all these things because we need to get out of this situation, yeah? We want a, we want a revelation of God's will and purposes, and, and, and his will is that we would know Jesus, that we'd know his son, yeah? All right, and then number three, uh, God wants to replace resolutions that depend on my effort with revelation that depends on his power and grace, uh, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, it says, uh, and we were actually, uh, Bill's been, been teaching on this verse. I thought this was awesome. He's, the last few weeks, he's been teaching about letting go of different things, letting go of cynicism, letting go of our anger. Um, and it came, you know, inspired by this verse. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he's seated at the right hand of the throne of God. 
And I just love this. I love this because um, he's saying, let go of, 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 of what's behind you. Let go of the things that are holding you back, the things, the sins that are entangling you. Start running the race. He's saying, run with endurance. And then he says, looking at Jesus, that he's the one that started this thing, and he's the one that's going to perfect this thing. He's the one that's going to end this thing. And he's saying, you, you don't have to do this in your own effort. You don't have to do this in your own strength. And I think this was really, really at the heart of, of uh, you know, thinking about uh, how futile, futile uh, resolutions can seem sometime. And I think the, the, the big thing is, is this, is that um, I cannot change myself and, and, and I cannot depend on my own effort. And I cannot form resolution. I cannot f- form revel- or resolution and vision for my life uh, based on, on my effort, on, on what I think I can accomplish. Um, but God wants me to depend on his power, depend on his grace. Yeah? And uh, Philippians 1, 3 through 6, he says, I thank God every time I remember you, in all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ. And we're... I just think it's, it's, it's amazing that this doesn't ride on us. That, that, that 2021 does not ride on my ability to make it the best year that I can make it. Uh, 2021 does not hinge on, on my ability uh, to, to control my life and control my circumstances. Um, but it's dependent on Jesus uh, completing what he started. That we're, we're, we're uh, a work that he's begun and he's going to finish it. And so, um, you know, I feel like that is the, the simple message I feel like he's speaking to me for, for 2021. Um, and, you know, trying to think of uh, <laughs> how do I apply this or what is the application, Lord? Um, I could only, I, I, I kind of felt just two things uh, uh, for us was, um, number one, uh, where, do, where do we find revelation? Where do we get revelation from the Lord? Um, and, and, and for me, I feel like uh, the Lord is calling me to his word. He's calling me back to his word um, in areas. Not, not I mean, uh, if there's a resolution to have, uh, God, would you, would you just give us revelation through your word? And, and give us hunger for your word again. And, and, and that's been, um, you know, uh, one area that I feel like the Lord's encouraged me. And then the other place that we can find revelation, uh, I just feel like, uh, you know, I'm jealous looking at uh, Living Stones, your guys' ability to gather. I know Bill came up and he just shared about all the awesome uh, courses and, and Ohana groups, things that, that, that we can get plugged into and, and we just really need to uh, be able to hear from the Lord through the church. And I know that that's been a huge lack in my life, my wife's life, uh, over the last few months or since March, not being able to gather, not being able to really be able to um, uh, be together, just missing hearing from the Lord through, through the body, missing hearing, uh, hearing uh, from the Lord through his, his people. And, and so... Uh, an encouragement and plug, uh, just to take advantage of of God's given resources. He's given grace for living stones, um, and just to really, uh, if you have the time, if you have the, the the resources for it, to to engage and to uh, to um, come uh, expecting to hear from the Lord and expecting to, to, for him to reveal more of himself through these things. So through, uh, through these things with the church, through his word. So that's it. That's all I have for tonight. Uh, was that too long? Are you guys okay? All right. I'm just going to pray for us, um, just to end. Father, 
Father, first, we just thank you for your grace. Thank you for your power in our lives. We thank you that, uh, Jesus, we love because you loved us first. We love you because you loved us first. And, um, and we, just, uh, we just thank you that it's not by our will, it's not by our own resolve, our own discipline, uh, that we're going to be able to um, see your kingdom this next year. It's by your grace, your power. It's by the revelation of your son, Jesus. And, and we ask for more of that in us, God. I just ask that we wouldn't uh, miss what you have for us, that, that Holy Spirit, you would help us to... Um, even in the midst of, of darkness and in deep trials, that, that we would uh, be able to hear you, that we'd be able to hear how you see us, how you measure us, that we would be able to see uh, your will, your, your, your huge purposes uh, for our lives. And we just pray that, um, that we would enter 2021 with a revelation of you, God. Give us more revelation of you as we start the year. Don't let us start 2021 running from anything. Don't let us start 2021 uh, trying to fix everything. Let us start by, 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 by waiting, by seeking you, by looking to you, the author, perfecter of our faith. Help us, God, to be patient. Help us to, to, to look to you. Yeah, we just pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen.